What's going on today, YouTube? Back with another one, BWI2ATXF, the channel. And today we're gonna overhaul this stupid proprietary H6R for reverse. No one makes that. Oh, man, we're gonna overhaul that to a 34, group 34 AGM because no one makes a H6R AGM battery. Why do I go to AGM, you ask? It's pretty simple, the dash cam. It's going right off of the bat battery and what discharging of a uh, battery does, uh, it really causes for issues for longevity. So uh, AGM batteries are designed to explicitly deep cycle. So once you get past the 50% threshold, it can recover. Uh, traditional flooded battery, which is the OEM battery, um, does not do well for a full deep cycle. They're not designed for that. So uh, if we're gonna overhaul to a more accessible Group 34, definitely make sure it's an AGM battery. And went to Napa, got some uh, rebranded DECA 9A34. If you're into batteries, that's by East, East Pin. My first video on this channel, I actually used the deck off of my, my car audio days on the ES300. They're bulletproof and they're good for the price. So we're gonna jump right into this. It's gonna be collaborated with a fixed battery bar uh, just to make it more tolerable for the size changes and everything is gonna have another bolt in the front and we're gonna get into overhauling this as well, the battery bracket. Here we go. First step is gonna to be to remove these terminals. It's gonna be a 10 millimeter. Get yourself a quick ratchet and just get them off. This is gonna be a deep socket 10 right here to release that bracket. And feel free to move this out the way with any clips. There's a clip right here um, that you may have correctly installed. I don't, because it doesn't move, but I had to make sure I ain't break the shit, but I didn't. So that pops right off. Get some real good access here. After you pull the battery out, it's gonna be somewhat of a sleeve right here. Make sure that those lines are detached from it, uh, or clips, I should say. And it's just to hold these uh, these terminals into place. Then there's gonna be a plate here at the bottom. You just pull that up and there would be 310 bolts, 10 millimeter bolts. One there, one there, and another one right here. And then once you remove that, there are additional bolts, not bolts, but Phillips screw, screws. Gotta remove one, two, three, and that should give me some clearance to work to get to this, this bolt that needs to be replaced. So now that all of those bolts are removed, this plate right here is easily removable. You do not need to remove that uh, module right there or disconnect anything. This plate now has wiggle room because that bracket isn't kind of fixing it into place. So you're able to flex this and you can even see the location of where the uh, factory J bolt is. Once you flex this, that J bolt should be able to be wiggled around and it comes right out. It's just a J bolt with a little tab right here. So once you just start wiggling it back and forth, up and down, it should free itself. And then we're gonna go ahead and put the figs J bolt that was given with the replacement in the same uh, location as where the OEM is. Now that you have that J bolt out, you may or may not get away with removing this, this uh, black bracket here, but if you have issues not doing so, just remove those uh, six bolts. And as I go through it, it looks like that J bolt, get in focus. It looks like that J bolt is actually held on to this plastic piece. So this bracket is what secures and gives it in, uh, rigidity and was able to seat that in between that hole and it catches right there in that little crisscross hashtag looking thing. And you can see the J bolt right here. Basically what you're gonna do, get it down there, rotate it and pull it up so it catches and 
Just rotate that out the way and you can proceed to install the replacement battery. So it's almost done charging at 75%. I'm gonna go ahead and put this in anyway and then finish it up once installed. Every battery you get, you should always put it on a trickle charger to give it an appropriate uh, slow charge, anything less than 10 amps. That's gonna uh, give you the full charge where it needs to be. Um, right off the shelf, it may or may not be charged depending on how new it is, but for safe measure, always uh, slow charge when you get home. And this is just comparison of the OEM, Panasonic, DECA. And side by side, they're really the same height. Just a little bit lower, but that's fine. Really identical. So we're gonna go ahead and put that bad boy in and wrap things up. This is how the battery sleeve looks like, uh, just as it is. Um, the battery is a great fit, but in order to accommodate for the H6, they install like these spaces here. So you got three options. You can lift this up, run it as is across and bolt down securely. I'm not doing that. If you wanna go again, uh, well, if you wanna take that route, be my guest, I I'm not. Uh, you can choose not to run the sleeve and these clips won't be around. That shouldn't be too much of a problem. Just the way they're uh, connected, they should stay in place, but I'm still looking for that functionality. Well, plan C, option three, cut these off. I'm gonna get some snips and make it look as pretty as possible just to maintain the sleeve. If you ever wanna go back, of course you would have to get a replacement uh, sleeve, but that part shouldn't be too much. This is the final result here, got it fully installed. This sleeve was kind of a hassle. I may or may not take it off, but I just clipped uh, that block that y'all saw earlier off. And you can see it's, it's functional, but yeah, we'll see. But the clips are intact to keep that away from the bay. Wires all consolidated. And that is a conversion of the H6R to the Group 34. Hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to like and subscribe. Leave your comments below. And that's been another episode of BWI2ATXL.